Satnam, Amandevi here offering a general reading as always explore what resonates and disregard what doesn't feel fit. I feel like this is just a starting point for sure. I encourage you to do your own inward reflection and research. The messages are coming in a, a lot differently in the last few days um, and I'm finally just like, okay, we got to sit with this and share this. And what I take from that is there's a process of both integrating the new levels of awareness and also purging what doesn't serve. Um, when I was saying the word purging, I was getting the word normative. So it's really relative to your integration, your soul's journey, your path, and your experience on the planet. What's rising and bubbling is meant for you to look at it with new eyes, to reassess your foundation and create freedom. I'm seeing hands with um, like chains breaking free on the wrist. A lot of times when I give reading, it's always like, let go of this, let go of that, let go of what doesn't serve. Or um, when it comes to like connections or workplaces, it's, Oh, you're at a higher frequency, you know, and you're you're called to the service, but you're still impacted emotionally, socially, energetically. Um, you're you're impacted on multiple levels by these experiences that you grow through, regardless of the like of how or why you got there. And to me, this new level of awakening feels like an eggshell breaking open and so that's that's like a birthing a birthing of you perhaps who you were destined to be and you're, you're always there on the path you're always on your path right it's it it's it's another level of becoming and i think more of it's about becoming clear within yourself about what you'll accept and what you'll reject and how you speak to yourself as a whole. And part of the knowledge of you is gained through your experience. And part of the way that you speak to and of yourself is also from experience. And some of those experiences weren't meant to hold you captive, but break you free. And the question I got was what layers are blocking your birthright and newfound freedom? It was interesting as I've sat with this, the information usually comes in pretty quick, quick to me. And I also had a process to grow through with, with this. And part of that was sharing with you because I ramble on about my own experiences a lot. I'm like, oh my goodness, here I go again. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't always feel comfortable sharing. Um, and in this case, it feels like sharing what I got from the block around feels important. Because it feels like a wall is placed around. So when I ask myself this question, I'm looking at layers like keep the next level up, right? It feels like this like wall around the circle around actually kind of like this egg around and what keeps that breaking open of it for me and you can look for yourself and I'm going to share in case it resonates and perhaps you're like oh yeah or you're like mm, not so much but you know something is forgiving myself forgiving myself, putting myself in a situation, forgiving myself for it not looking tidy or it's not packaged neatly. Like this being human is messy. It's messy. And the external world or that needing to be tidy, needing to be in a box, needing to be form-fitting, is not forgiving, it's quite harsh. And so how I, or maybe we learn to relate to ourselves is in a very harsh way. 
beating ourselves into a box that we were never meant to live in. And then we wonder why we're stagnant when part of us wants to propel forward. And there has to be some sort of thing we're leniency, maybe that leniency towards ourselves to really just feel. And it takes time to get comfortable feelings, especially when there's been trauma. And especially when there's been trauma and you've learned addictive coping patterns, right? Because not only do you have to battle demons, and I don't mean demons as in um, attachment, sort of way um it's more like skeletons in the closet kind of way it's like i can't i i lost my train of thought like i totally just lost it uh i'm seeing Brene brown like beat it with a measuring stick like it's not that clear cut to like get the strategies and be done with it very quickly I believe that because I'm seeing her in her brown shirt. Um, I think that's her first TED talk on vulnerability, if you want to look that up. Mm, being vulnerable to yourself and admitting what you want when it comes to manifesting. Being vulnerable with yourself to say, this really did hurt. I might put a front to myself and others that it didn't and I can withstand this, but deep down inside it hurt and I'm disappointed or being vulnerable enough to actually have some expectations and plan for something greater for yourself. There's some things about relationships, but we're also coming up with this. Um, and so I'll speak to that as well. And I feel like too, going through the process of birthing your own new reality breaking free and allowing yourself to be vulnerable and raw, you know, that messy cry, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. I think we also need to get comfortable. Like knowing that that's temporary and get comfortable. With that's part of the human experience that this incarnation and this part of the process. And I listened to a talk because it was interesting. I got this question. Then I listened to the talk and I had to like sit with this again. So I'll share with that. Um, I think I already talked to forgiveness. Can you forgive yourself? Can you forgive yourself? And grieving what feels lost. If you put yourself aside for that workplace, if you put yourself aside for that connection, you put yourself aside for that marriage, it happens very slowly, more often than not. That workplace, soon you realize how many hours you've worked and you don't get that time back. In that connection, giving and giving and giving, next thing you know, you're like, I'm tired of having welcome tattooed on my fucking forehead. Where am I? I don't want to be a doormat. Whatever it is for you. Give me the words, relinquish, relinquish control. Back to birthing. And uh, if, you, if you're having mental health concerns, please seek professional help. This isn't meant to replace professional care, perspective to inspire you in your journey. I thought it was very interesting when, you know, I set out these questions and I went back to this chat and she talked about birthing, child birthing, as in the way Maya Luna and the talk of um, patriarchal femininity, it was hosted by the Summit of Sexuality, or host, hosted by the Somatic Institute for Women. And she was one of the first talks and she talked about birth being a very natural, primal experience. Very natural and primal experience. I mean, it's wrong. I mean, ugh, sorry. <laughs> I don't <have> to judge. <laughs> Just that was my feeling of it. <laughs> um, 
uh, perhaps you birthing you, you breaking free of what's held you captive is also going to be very primal and raw. And in the talk, Maya also talked about there's a shift in the way in society from allowing birth to be so raw and primal to be to being restrained, using drugs to tone down. And again, this is why I brought up mental health. You know, if, if you're having mental health concerns and a prescription is what you need, I respect that. Like, there's a time and place for everything, and you have to make your own choice what's best for you. And I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, and not your, your professional care. You, you have to do what you need to do. But think of that toning down of your own primal experience of how emotions want to be pushed through you so they can be processed and released. So you can really look and reevaluate and let go and let it move out of your system in some way. There was a process of which it has to move out of your system. And how is it being toned down? Is self-medicating. And you could add in medicating, but I, I you know, like I say, if you, if you need medication for your mental health concerns, I mean, by all means, do what you need to do to stay alive and well. I just thought that was interesting because part of that shift from birth to raw and primal and bloody <laughs> to being restrained and drugged, part of that was about embarrassment, not wanting to be feminine. How more feminine can giving birth be? <laughs> you know, but women didn't want to be embarrassed, and they might choose that medication. We might hold in our transformative processes, our somatic release is not to be embarrassed. We might hold back those tears and snot balls, <laughs> not to be embarrassed, not share how we're feeling because we don't want to be wrong, vulnerable with ourselves and to others. I mean, when you get really raw in your experience, I mean, it's visceral. Can you get a little bit comfortable with that emotional surge? That rising of being alive. There's not something wrong with you because you're feeling. Maybe that's exactly how you need to experience this moment. <laughs> Brene Brown talks in that. The vulnerability talk. I just can have a beer and a banana mu no, muffin. <laughs> you know, you're just going to push it away. It'll come back. <laughs> It'll come back in some wonky way. Uh, one last thing from the talk of patriarchal femininity. I love that she used the word potent. Potent. I don't get any kickbacks or this, more just sharing where I like to share where things come from so you can continue your research. I think sometimes that blocking of yourself and not wanting to feel you kind of need you kind of need it a little bit to keep going right right if you're you're pushing forward to feed your family and you got to put those hours in you, you've got to push yourself away a little bit your own needs right and so you know when you're you're taking on a new task you're going to school there's a certain amount of pushing things aside to have discipline to complete a task right this is different that's not what I want to ask or speaking to is a little bit different. It's about getting raw and honest with yourself. And it's so much easier said than done. And I, you know, sometimes I feel like such a hypocrite. I'm like, oh, just let go. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> oh, this is just your sole purpose. It, you know, but I speak to it because I feel blessed to hear your experiences. Those of you who share with me and I feel like for me that these experiences had to happen for a reason, you know, like no one deserves ill treatment. Let's just stay 
not with a deep thread of abuse for the sake of this conversation, but let's just stick with narcissistic abuse, if you don't mind. Um, I, I just don't want to go on that deeper trail. I do apologize for that. It's like, why are empaths always, <laughs> why are these light workers always getting these narcissists? <laughs> why, are, why are these strong women who date have tons of love keep getting such a backlash from their masculines? For example, why is that emotional beatdown happening? Sometimes physical. Like I said, I just want to stick with that narcissist. And then how does that create that shell around you of how you believe yourself you should be? And part of me believes it's part of your blueprint. You signed up for this mission. And part of you learning how to break free of that is why you came to be. Because that transmutes the energy. And that's a miracle. And you become the walking miracle that the world needs to see. And when I thought about freedom and I thought about the, the abusive tendencies that we're often confronted were, with as light workers, healers, star seeds, karma lords, you know, whatever, however you want to name yourself. Like, but still, <laughs> why does this happen? It can't just say, like, you're a higher vibrational frequency. Oh, your soul signed up for this. So I did pull out a quote for you on that. <laughs> and this comes from, and I don't have the book here, it's actually in storage. Um, but Carl Jung talks about, he has a series of lectures um, that are recorded in the psychology of Kundalini Yoga. And talks about hatred as a thing that divides. Hatred is a thing that divides. And while this doesn't give a clear-cut answer, it might help to soften the process of understanding why you're receiving such pushback um, and the game playing and the manipulation. And perhaps this perspective, maybe, could help you find some freedom and solace. When it talks about the opposite of love, like when someone, I take this, he speaks to it in terms of love. He says, um, hatred is the thing that divides the force which discriminates. It is when two people fall in love, they need hatred in order to separate themselves. And I, I'd like to replace, like when they fall in love, it's more of like being vulnerable to connect, right? Because I, I don't feel like we need it's healthy to go to such extremes, right? But why is it <laughs> those of you who are these higher vibrational frequencies are met with these narcissists and you start dating, all of a sudden you're like, why are all these games happening, <laughs> right? And I hear from you uh, about it or why is there this emotional abuse? Um, why are these adult temper tantrums happening before your eyes? This is supposed to be a loving relationship what's happening and I'm going to say based on this reflection that's coming up coming through it's like that can't handle the vulnerability and going to that depth so rather than opening up to the love that emanates from you they've got to push up every wall they've got because it's so freaking uncomfortable to receive that love from you so it's not you there's nothing wrong with you for bringing love to the table they just didn't want the meal they couldn't handle it <laughs> mm, i don't know so um forgiveness too i thought it was important just to, sh to share um not knowing what you don't know and which case like if things are bubbling to the surface you're taking time to reflect and with these transits and the way this portal is kind of open up to push you along on the next leg of your journey so to speak you might ha be having all these ahas you're like oh there i am oh that happened oh okay that you know what i mean <laughs> it's all like just coming up uh you may or may not um want to look up um and I put it on my website, 
uh, pedagogy of the, the press. This, more, this is more about education, but it's you educating yourself, but really not knowing what you don't know. Um, Maya Luna talks about it's the water we don't know that we're swimming in, the water we don't know that we're swimming in. And so it feels like you've the divine has given you that for that breath of fresh air that let you have your head above water for a moment for you to see but then you have to like go back in the waters to clean it up before you can like get out and dry yourself off um that process that process i hope that sharing served well um i don't like to share is like making about me it just I, I can only speak to my experience and I, there's the last thing anyone should be doing is should <laughs> is chatting at you, telling you what you should do. That's that's really an offering here. We don't want that one. Can't be want this one. And thank you, dear, for this deck. I, I it's funny. You always send me a deck after I look at it, and I'm like, mm, mm. and then next thing you know, it pops up. <laughs> so thank you for that. Mahakita. I think some too that that pushback isn't so strong as hatred. Sometimes it's not wanting to take accountability and what's under that, being vulnerable, and, and that happens in the workplace. Uh, I hate that flipping stuff. And it's hard to just be like, "Yeah, that's wrong. I messed that up." Maybe because heads roll if they don't, if you mess up. Mistakes should be honored. It's a part of life. How how else we how else do we learn? How else would we learn if we don't get messy? How do you know how to clean things up? That's why I like art. It was a process. I had fun when I used to teach art classes or have the kids over from the neighborhood <laughs> in the shed doing art projects. Because I, I just feel like it's problem solving skills and confidence building and just creating something that doesn't exist in the world, whether it's on paper or otherwise. Right? We need to learn that we're capable of doing that. All right, what, what's going on here? I'm going to talk to process oriented art. Okay. And I'm seeing one artist now. And art has changed since I've really like looked at it or no names, you know, kind of after, after college and going in and looking at art history the same way. There was this, okay, okay, okay. Um, I talked about her before and I can't think of her name, but she did this series on Lick and Lather and she also did this other one, which is what I was seeing. Uh, she painted the floor with her hair and it was just like this whole invite, like getting into it, like getting into the moment and getting raw and real. And it just so happens that it's processed in creative expression. Mm, okay, that's the second chakra. <laughs> so that's where we're coming in with the emotional tides. Okay. And then I, the, the second chakra ties in with the throat, the Vasuna chakra. And so learning to express it. And then what's in between that, we have our solar plexus and our heart, right? So that divine path is not in the linear i mean tell me stargaze look up um the way the system flows isn't quite as linear as, as we'd like but it's all tied in together is kind of how i'm seeing it the way they're showing it to me right now hearing mo mantra now it's kind of like making your pack if you will uh, what are you going to see through for yourself i want to say based on that how do you need to let it out of your system okay so in lick and lather the way she connected to herself and our so i spoke to her hair right and you can also look at the work at Vito Conchi. 
and people are usually really turned off by his work, but I, I think it's really profound. If you can get past like what he's doing and look at it, what he's teaching is huge. So if you can look past the situation for yourself and see what really just wants to come through, right? That's the messy part of it. Um, I mean, there's so ethical boundaries uh, to consider. So if you're looking at Vito Kachi. Mm, okay, so in his one work, he did um, performative art. And there's one work where he was blindfolded with a bat. You're like, damn, okay. <laughs> but he was swinging the bat. The whole time, if you could get close enough, he was telling secrets. But look, you, you had to get close. You had to get in the danger zone, right? You could get hurt and get too close. But that's where the depth it is. So some of that fight that's around you to yourself or you with other intimate partners. And when I say fight, I'm not saying abuse. I'm saying uh, the, the backlash. Like I said, I want to kind of keep it to narcissist, emotional abuse. Not that that's any better than the physical. I just don't want to go down that rabbit hole today of <laughs> anything deeper. Um, and it's not a fixed way of being. Not a fixed way of being. Well, I didn't expect all this to come out. <laughs> oh, lick and leather. I keep freaking talking about lick and leather. <laughs> uh, what is it? If you look up um, PBS, I think PBS did the special. I'm not sure who did that. Art in the 21st Century. I can see the book is like bright pink. Um, oh, she did a series of busts of herself, and they're lick and lather, and she made some out of soap and so she would bathe with these busts of herself and then the others made out of chocolate and she licked them. <laughs> so how can you get close to you? Is it with soap? Is it with chocolate? <laughs> I don't know. So like, like inner explore, exploration and having that freedom. So that you can set a new tone for your life and lifestyle. Manifesting. Manifesting. What makes you happy? I can't think enough for this deck. King of Pentacles. Oh, the material. And this has like a dancing quality to me, like dancing with the earth. And that being the portal that opens you up. And it might not be dancing for you. There may be another form of movement or connecting in. So continue that process to allow you to, to make the moves you need on the physical plane. Nine of Cups. What's your wish fulfillment? <laughs> this reminds me, though, of the Last Supper for some reason. I guess because they're just lined up. But it's not the end. It's the beginning. But it's the end of something to bring in something new. Here in the song, Closing Time. Closing Time. And, and these, I can't remember the words that were just given to me. It was like something about beginnings being something end. But it's that beginning end flow. And it's, I mean, like you can't stay here. You can't stay in the spot. It's time to make a move. The King of Pentacles says you know how to do it, and the emotional body is already telling you you want something. The energetic, energetic body, you already have the capability of working with. You know how to do that. So what's stopping you from making a move? That stagnant period. Show forgiveness. Forgiveness is it. You reap what you sow. Someone said that to me today when we were talking. Thank you for that. Oh, Eight of Swords, you feel stuck. I get it. I get it. I get it. So you're hit with all this new information flooding in. So you're like, whoa. <laughs> wow. I see. I see. The hanged person gives a new perspective. I see me. It's no longer a secret. And yet it's still a little confusing because we can't, 
there's still this deep dive that needs to take place. And yet you still have to function on the material, right? The physical level in some aspect. So you're learning how to work in these multiple dimensions. And sometimes when the, notice when it's you holding yourself back or the divine has in a sense put up the guardrails or put up the bumpers in the bowling lane to keep you on track. You're probably ready for the training wheels to come off, but it might not be time to go for a bike ride. Hear me? Knight of Pentacles. It's a little slower than you'd like. But you're no secret to yourself anymore. Um, I did speak to institutions, or give me the word institution. And how does that kind of make us believe, or have we chosen to believe in the facade of this happy family, or how happiness has to look, or what life has to look like on the outside? Like, how important is it to keep holding up this mirror, or holding up this mask? masquerade rather than really living and loving the six of swords tells us there will be momentum and it, it's probably a part of the perception the perception that you're blocking like how you're blocking yourself and how a new way of thinking needs to come in or is being integrated and that's what's going to tell you anything anything is possible that's what you're turning to different frequency so then you change radio stations when you are traveling in your car you don't listen to the same station you listen to in the other state you got tune into a new frequency because that's where you're at to integrate the new levels of awareness and then what when you travel sometimes there's a different grocery store you go to and different gas stations so things are going to look a little bit different in the material don't be afraid of the change Mm, I can't remember this. I remember. <laughs> I don't have my art history book for this one, but I remember. I was awful in art history. That sound of that projector was just like a lullaby to sleep. Like, who sleeps in, <laughs> in their college class? But I was working, and I was a parent, and I partied. <laughs> no excuse, but you no. Know, I was on point for a part of part of it, but I can't remember the details. Hmm. Maybe not meant to. That's my Soul Path Numerology deck. There are some blank cards in this deck and a few other decks purposely so that you can write your own message on. Because you have your own number sequences that call to you. And you have your own messages that your words that your your guide team you know works for you with you. Nine of Pentacles. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Okay. what you what you what you want <laughs> acceptance accept the blessings accept this new knowing three three so to manifest this infinite level of integration like you are that epic nine enjoy the journey a new foundation is being laid or the the groundwork is laid through the experiences of the past it's now the mental and emotional body that needs to purge it well, that helped you give it help to give you what you needed to move on standing up what do you need to know to move forward what questions could you ask help and trust you, you trust what you feel so take time to balance out it's like it's almost like i'd like to see the two of pentacles here oh you we're not seeing it because you you've got some work in the mental body to to do mm -hmm. let me hitch a ride hitch a ride like i'm like what um 
Okay, let's just talk this out. Okay, and I don't know exactly where they're going with this. So, at one point, you would hitch a ride. You would, you would go down the road. You would travel across country with your, your thumb up, right? <laughs> we don't do that now, right? I don't know how that relates. That's what I'm getting from Hitch a Ride. And then, you know, I've thought about uh, Zoe's grandparents. I believe her grandfather, her paternal grandfather, hitchhiked cross country. And that sort of thing. Lived to tell the tale. I guess there's healthy risk you take. Calculated or like efforts, something. Efforts just coming up. You make an effort for you. But you're worth it. I got two fours with some number of eights. Oh, eight to nine. I think, you know, I think all in all, if you're feeling someone's energy pull at you, they probably are going through the same process with you at the cell level because I feel like it's a collective current right now that's pushing through um so that forgiveness you can also extend to another and that will help release the energetic pull that you might have <laughs> how do you know you found the route fit whether it's a person in a workplace or a sale they're closing a deal like what are your deal makers how do you know that something is landing with you on an energetic level how do you know you found what you need, you want? And what's motivating you to make a change? What's really pushing you outside of the stagnation? Like what's it gonna take for you to break free? What's starting to feel uncomfortable that the place that you created for your comfort zone is no longer comfortable for you? Let's hold, how are you holding yourself back? It's interesting the numbers we have here. What do you keep cycling in? So what's your pattern? What's your pattern? And it might not be a pattern within a couple weeks, a couple months. You can look back years past. You can also look at your family history years past. And will you trust the transformation that's going to help you break free out of that pattern? Break free out of that pattern. Remind yourself that you're worth the effort it takes to make a move. Like, check me, <laughs> trying to make a move, right? Well, thank you for your listening. I do hope this serves well. Sending you lots of love and light on your journey. You're worth it.